Hey guys, in this video I will demonstrate how to generate client-side SDK for your API services and use those SDKs in a client-side program to enable invocations of your API services from the client side. To demonstrate how it works, I will switch to the business logic section of the screen. And I have uh, an API service already deployed. It is a sample API service that uh, uses the codeless technology. It can be any API service for what I'm going to demonstrate. Here I'm using codeless because it is simple. I already have it in there. If you don't have an API service, you can easily create exactly the same one by clicking the plus icon, switching codeless, select this checkbox, give it a name, click save, and exactly the same API service that we have here will be generated. This API service is there for purely demonstration purposes. And what it does, it provides very minimalistic uh, demo kind of uh, functionality to demonstrate how API services work. And in this case, it is a demo of a shopping cart. The, one of the methods is called get instructions. If you invoke it, it will actually tell you how to use this API service, but it's, it's very straightforward. Uh, you add items to a shopping cart, then you can uh, get a listing of the items. Uh, you can change quantity. And then finally, when you invoke the purchase method, uh, this API service takes whatever you have in the shopping cart and then puts it, uh, stores that information in the backendless database in a table that is called order. In this case, I don't have the table. It will be created once we start using our client application. So first of all, how do you generate a client side SDK for your API service? It couldn't be simpler. Backendless does, does most of the work for you. Uh, what you need to do is you will locate the, the icons that, is, that are right next to the, that little section where the service name shows up. And one of the icons, uh, it, the tooltip says download client SDK. When you click the icon, you get uh, available options. And uh, these are the languages in which the client side SDK will be generated. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have options for Android, JavaScript, uh, and iOS uh, with two different languages, Objective-C and Swift. For the demo purposes, I will use JavaScript because it's going to be just so much easier for me to set up the environment and demonstrate how it works. However, what I'm going to demonstrate is entirely possible for uh, Android and iOS environments. So you select JavaScript, uh, just simply click on this option. Uh, Backendless quickly opens another uh, browser window just to download it. As you can see, there was little uh, kind of a blink on the screen but what we have here is a zip file that contains the generated code so if you click on the zip file it uh, opens up and uh, the contents of the zip file are going to be like this so here we do have a, a project files one of the project files is for intellij idea or until intellij webstorm which is the ID that we recommend. You can use any ID of your choice. For instance, if you like to use Visual Studio Code, no problem. So it, it, there is really no dependency on the IDE. Uh, and there is a JS file that contains all the logic that uh, enables you to invoke the API services methods directly from a JavaScript application. I already uh, pre-created a, a project uh, here, and this is my development environment. So as you can see, uh, these are all the, the, the files that were included. Uh, and in the JS, we do have the, the JavaScript that is generated by Backendless. And as you will see right here, for every single method that we had, for every single API operation or method that we had in the API service, there's going to be a function here that allows you to invoke the corresponding API method directly from the client side. So here we have purchase, get items, we have the delete item. So essentially all the same operations that you saw right here are now available as JavaScript functions. So to demonstrate how to use these functions, I sort of enriched this uh, project by adding index.html. And in here I imported that uh, JS file right here on this line 17. I also uh, imported backendless SDK for JavaScript, line 16, right here. And these, uh, this, this is, uh, we have it in our documentation. And then for the demonstration purposes, super simple. I just created 
a couple of um, HTML links where each link will invoke a function that in turn uses the generated code. And they are in the order in which I will demonstrate it. So first of all, I will be invoking get instructions. Then I will add an item to a shopping cart and I'll get a listing of the items in the shopping cart. And finally, I will click purchase. Let me show you what it's going to look like. So here we have four links and the, behind each link, there's going to be an invocation of the API service. So these methods, uh, I've created them, but they turn around and invoke the actual API service. So let me show you the implementation for these methods. So we go into get instructions. And uh, so these are, in fact, all the methods that will be used here in the demo. So for get instructions, uh, as you can see, I'm using this dot codeless shopping cart service uh, dot get instructions. So uh, what what I do is I literally just turn around and invoke the generated code. So this line right here is is I didn't have to write it. Well, I wrote the actual line. I didn't have to write the code behind it. But the this JS file already gives you an ability to to do the invocations without any, doing anything special. So you literally just start using the generated code. And then the generated code uses the JavaScript promises. So you do the invocation of the method and then add the callback of what needs to happen when you get the result. So this result variable is what I get back from the service. Uh, likewise, when I invoke add item, then I just delegate the invocation to the codeless shopping cart item method and then there are two arguments one of them is the name of the shopping cart and then the actual item that I'm adding and the item consists of the name and the quantity same thing for get items I delegate to the service invoke get items provide the name of the card when I get the result I just literally out output that result on the screen and then the purchase just invoke the purchase method with the name of the card so let's see how it works and uh, in here I will also open the uh, network tab in the developer tools just so we can see the actual traffic bet between the client side between the, my browser and the actual backend uh, where the API service is running so click get instructions and this is the response from the server and this is the invocation and as you can see uh, if we take a look at the headers this is a uh, uh, the request headers and the response headers and then in the response that what comes back from the API service click add item and then in here uh, the response is is null there is really nothing in there but if uh, you see that the request payload just contains this JSON that identifies the card and puts the item in there okay uh, click get items and then this returns the preview this is of what we have currently in the shopping cart finally uh, we click purchase that invocation takes place uh, and uh, now everything that we had in the shopping cart that API service put it into the backendless database if we take a look uh, in the database of my application now you can see there is an order table that was created by the API service and then the object that we passed from JavaScript into the API service that was sitting in the shopping cart now is uh, sitting in the database and we see that there is an order for milk uh, quantity one you can see how that API service is implemented just to see what it does by going into any of these methods like for instance if you go to get instructions click on logic and then here you will see the codeless logic that that is used by that uh, uh, service same thing for adding an item or deleting an item uh, purchasing you can see exactly what's going on here and this this uses codeless it may not it may look kind of scary when you look for the first time but trust me once you start playing with codeless and start doing things with it it just becomes so much easier however if you are not into codeless if you are a js developer right and node or if you're a java developer you can deploy your javascript and java services and everything that I have demonstrated to you at this point, being able to invoke your JavaScript or invoke your Java API services from JavaScript using the generated code, everything that I have demonstrated today entirely applies to all API services running in Backendless. And once again, I used Codeless just for the demo purposes. I hope this uh, makes it easier for you to understand how to use the generated code, how much value uh, that code generation provides to you and uh, you can start using it in your applications. 
thank you. If you have any questions, please post them as comments to this video or uh, come to our support forum, support.backhandlers.com. Let us know what you think. Uh, this is absolutely phenomenal technology and uh, we would love you to start using it because you can really, really take advantage of it to build fantastic applications. Thank you and as always, happy coding.